Very honored, very honored to have you here. Andrea, if you'll allow me, on behalf of the people of Jordan, I'd like to begin by expressing my condolences to the people of Italy for those who perished in last month's earthquake in Amatrice. I know that we stand in solidarity. I know that we stand in solidarity with all of Italy as the difficult process of healing begins. But rebuild you will, as you will heal. And now, back to this evening. It's a pleasure to return to one of my favorite cities in the world to receive this award. And receiving it from you makes it all the more special. Because your example, your values and generous spirit inspire me and all of us to work harder for those most in need. With love and justice at the heart of the work of your foundation, you remind us all of the power and potential of our common humanity. The chorus of children's voices in Haiti, uplifted through music therapy, are testament to that. Love and justice are also at the heart of the important work to which Muhammad Ali dedicated his life. His courage and determination, even as he suffered, have helped to keep Parkinson's at the forefront of medical research efforts. And I'm so grateful that Lonnie is here to help us honor him and continue the legacy of the champ. I said a moment ago that Florence was one of my favorite cities in the world. That's because she is so much more than just a beautiful city. She's the cradle of the Renaissance, that watershed moment in our shared history that redefined how we relate to art, music, and culture. A time when art and artists were celebrated for how they expressed the beauty of the natural world and man's place within it. When musicians transformed the way they composed and communicated their music. And when designers simultaneously channeled and challenged classical influences from classical times to create the outstanding architectural splendor we see around us today. The Renaissance was an age of flourishing, but it was also an age of chaos. Yet people persisted. They built beauty and achieved breakthroughs that we still know and celebrate over 500 years later. It was a time of profound transformation and progress, of darkness into light, a period which shaped the early modern world and for which we will forever be indebted. The question we must ask ourselves as we navigate the crises of our times is, what will shape our world today? What will our legacy be? The stakes could not be higher. Right now, there are forces at work in Syria, Iraq, South Sudan, Nigeria, and beyond, determined to drag us back to the dark ages. Intimidated by our progress, they want us to live in a world of black and white where the only color is the red of bloodshed. They want to silence the universal language of music and the healing sound of song. And as we've seen all too often, their priority upon seizing an area is to destroy its heritage, art, any sign of civilization, from the historic city of Palmyra in Syria to Iraq's ancient Assyrian city of Nimrud. They have declared war on all of civilization, but perhaps their most painful attack is that on the innocence of childhood. Like Umran Dagnish. You remember Umran, the five-year-old rescued last month from the rubble after an airstrike in Aleppo, Syria. He sat in the back of an ambulance, dusty, dazed, and shell-shocked, so deeply traumatized that not even the sight of his own blood fazed him. His silence screamed at the world and the world had few words to offer back. Is this our legacy for future generations? No. Civilizations in ruin 
and childhoods buried forever under the rubble of war and indifference? I think not. Ladies and gentlemen, hundreds of years ago this month, Michelangelo's David was first unveiled just a few steps from here. The pose of Michelangelo's sculpture was unlike that of earlier depictions of the young warrior, triumphant over the slain Goliath. Instead, he chose to depict David just before the battle, his brow drawn, his eyes focused. He captured him in that decisive moment between realizing what he must do and summoning the courage to do it. That split second between conscious choice and action. We are in that moment and our world desperately needs a new renaissance that drives humanity to give its best just when the stakes are highest. To act, not hesitate. To reach out, not retreat. To create and celebrate beauty, not only for its own sake, but for the sake of humanity. For in celebrating beauty, we celebrate progress and perseverance. We counter the ugliness of those forces that seek to wreak havoc on us and we re-energize our shared instinct for common decency and compassion. The instinct that sees us stand up for the downtrodden and speak out for those whose voices are silenced. You know that instinct well. It is what brings you here this evening and guides your daily lives. So tonight, as we applaud the power of the human spirit, let us invoke the courage and vision of our forebearers here in Florence. Let us honor the beauty that Andrea brings to the world through his music and his tireless work. And let us together, across our diverse backgrounds and cultures, define the legacy that the world will still celebrate half a millennium from now. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. And now Andrea and Veronica will present Her Majesty with the Andrea Bocelli Humanitarian Award. Are the photographers happy? Yes, they're happy. Thank you so much, Your Highness. And thank you, Andrea and Veronica. I'll see you later.